Disclaimer. These videos are meant to be a brief overview of the subject. They are written to meet time constraints while still conveying factual historical information. My sources for each video are in the video summary below and can get you started on a more in-depth look at the subject. On a personal note, if there is a way to mispronounce the name, I will do it. It is a gift and I am sorry about it ahead of time. Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Thompson Station, located in Williamson County, Tennessee, on March 4th to 5th, 1863. On March 4th, a Union reinforced infantry brigade commanded by U.S. Colonel John Coburn was heading south from Franklin towards Columbia. The Union forces had been exhausted from the prior fighting at the end of 1862 and had now only started moving again. After making camp for the night, the brigade moved towards Columbia again on the morning of the March 5th. As it got up that morning, March 5th, Union Major General Charles C. Gilbert ordered Coburn and his men to perform a reconnaissance of the area. Gilbert was told that Coburn's men were compact and ready to move. Coburn's troop members consisted of both the 33rd and 85th Indiana, along with the 19th Michigan and 22nd Wisconsin. However, something not known to Gilbert was that none of these troops had ever seen battle. In fact, they had never served under Coburn prior to this mission. They were a new set of troops being deployed to help fill the losses of the prior year. Coburn moved his men forward at 9 a.m. They numbered about 3,000 troops that were in light marching order. It is believed the troops were in high spirits as they believed they were only performing a foraging expedition. At 10.30 that morning, just four miles south of Franklin, they came across Confederate Brigadier General William H. Red Jackson and his troops, which consisted of a large number of cavalry, augmented with artillery. The artillery from both sides thundered for an hour, but neither side was heavily damaged. During the artillery fire, Coburn advanced some of his men while the Confederates fell back and moved east to outflank the Union troops. During this time, Confederate Major General Earl Van Dorn arrived and issued a frontal attack with his own men. Seeing this movement, Coburn sent word back to General Gilbert on the situation. Unfortunately, General Gilbert considered Coburn's reports quote-unquote wild and extravagant, and instead of sending reinforcements, he sent Captain Thomas W. Johnston forward to review the situation. It turned out that Coburn wasn't wrong, and after three hard-fought attempts, Confederate Commander Jackson's troops took the Union forces at the hillside position and surrounded Coburn's men. Out of ammunition, with no reinforcements coming and no options, Coburn surrendered. Estimated losses were 1,906 Union soldiers killed, wounded, captured, or missing, while the Confederate losses were around 300. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.